my last video, which was about the Crescent outboard, 4 horsepower outboard, uh, several of you liked, and uh, so not wishing to bore you, I'll uh, do a, one of a similar vein. Towards the end of the the, the video, I, I more really is a bit of a funny a joke. I show the the CB um, the JAP little outboard. These were made by Austin Burrell Limited. Um, in about they started in about nineteen. 56 ish and finished in about 1970s, mid somewhere around there. And uh, <laughs> they made a range of engines from three quarter horsepower up to a, a massive one and a half horsepower. <laughs> anyway, it was just a little bit of a funny, really. And um, but uh, as you can see from the bench here. It's in pieces now. It was bought really because of memories I had when I was young and I had one of these. I won't go into the story and it was just a, a nostalgic trip if you like. And I bought it as a, well, just a bit of a static, you know, display. It's knowing really your limitations and whether things can be restored or not. The whole thing, the whole thing was solid. You couldn't, it took two hands to try, well you couldn't turn the flywheel. Um, everything is absolutely solid. Um, and just knowing when to quit, if you had any sense that is, is uh, part of the secret. But uh, as you know by now I'm a bit of a nutcase. So I can't say with certainty where this is going to go. Um, I'm usually a quite uh, confident in what I do, or blind faith, call it what you will, but um, I can't be too sure at this one. But anyway, I'm going to have a little attempt to try and get it going. That's the, that's the plan. So, I've gone ahead a little bit here, sorry about that, but uh, I didn't know you'd like the other video that much, so. So, a lot of the nuts and things were missing. Um, I tried. We tried to turn the the engine, which you now see does turn, and it just wouldn't budge. I tried to turn the the propeller end. There's no, this is all solid on here. I don't know if I'm ever going to get that off. I've removed the nut and so forth, but you know, we've got to be realistic. Can it be done? Um, is it worth the risk of trying to get that off? I don't need to take that off. I've removed this from the gearbox here, as you can see. What is quite interesting about these, this is just the leg, what is quite interesting about these um, these little old outboards is they use a hammerite finish. If you see a, a hammered, hammerite, gold, bronzy coloured uh, leg, someone hasn't painted it, that was part of their production. And they used an old English white for the paintwork of that but you can see it's that's all pretty bad but anyway we'll see you we you know we'll, we'll learn from a few mistakes even if i don't get the thing going so nothing would move and everything was solid so what was making it solid well i initially thought perhaps the engine and the piston were seized within the barrel but um i undid the, the head i started off by taking the the gearbox apart because I once had a small seagull where the whole the same uh, symptoms and it was a seized up bearing in the in the gearbox so I attempted to take this apart there's no there's no filler plug on this um, I don't remember one anyway and there isn't one here so it doesn't appear to be filled up with oil and this was filled up with grease a black gungy grease whether that's right or not, I don't know. Well, there's evidence of it there, look. Well, I cleaned it all down with some petrol. I originally went here because there was all black gunge all around. I mean, I cleaned this down with some petrol, right? But um, it was all like that all over, you know. But that turns fine enough. 
more reasonably so. Right, the first problem I encountered, let's take the problems one by one, let's stand this up. That piston did half come in handy. <laughs> I'll zoom down to that if I can. Bear with me. Okay. That obviously sat in there. Okay, like that. Well, this little screw, I've got it here somewhere, a little counter sunk. Where are you? There we go, it's one of those. Okay, little counter sunk. And that sat in there, obviously. Okay. Well, everything is solid, as I said, and I, I've got a good fitting screwdriver, and I was able to undo that one. So I thought, well, that's good. And when I come to this this one, no way. I just simply chewed. I just chewed up the chewed up the uh, the end of the screw. There was nothing to get hold of. I tried using a dot punch to move it right no the whole thing got mangled up so I ended up filing this flat across here and then putting a dot punch in the center the very very center and drilled down so down the core to about this depth to my little finger with a that size slightly smaller drill than that and when the drill came up so did the remains of the head and then with a little bit of tapping and some screwdrivers, this was eased up and eased up and eventually came out, leaving a little stub piece here. Well, <laughs> I put a plus of gas all around it. I used a miniature pair of steel shims. I used uh, different types of mole grips and it got shorter and more mangled and I ended up with nothing to move it. So working on the uh, premise of don't uh, do any other damage, I filed this off, well I ground it off flush, as you can see that's perfectly flush. And I dot punched the, the very epicenter there and set this up with blocks on the drill press and drilled down, drilled it out, just less than the core of the thread. And then I drop a thread in there and uh, I've got to find a make machine another bolt but as you can see that now goes in there perfectly well so we recovered from that disaster but uh, how many more we to find I've no idea if I had any sense at all and I've very little I wouldn't embark on this at all <laughs> Having removed this gear and the propeller from the gearbox end and cleaned it out, this is the main drive shaft that uh, runs down the leg. It, it didn't look in this condition, I might add. It was all red rust and uh, I've put it in the lathe and safely and carefully use some crocus paper and just generally cleaned it up this square end came down into the gearbox and there's our little planetary wheel which had got a square on and that sat on like so and obviously drove that well you know i'm pretty certain you know that so and i could see that uh, trying to remove the engine that this moved down a bit so i knew this was a either on a spline or in this case a square well this shaft there is no other way this shaft had to be put down from the top didn't it it had to it couldn't go in this way you can't turn corners so it had to go down from the top well it took a lot of effort uh, little wooden wedges wiggle wiggle tap tap wiggle wiggle tap tap and it came up a bit came up a bit and eventually we got this out and at this end is threaded and that threaded goes into can I get this in shot that threads into the end of the gear into the end of the 
shaft of the motor so it just simply does itself up. So there's no water pump or anything to worry about in this leg so I pursued with this eventually getting it out. And it is about here where our problems exist. There was scoring on the on the main shaft here, can you see it? All badly scored there. I mean I've cleaned it up now. But what's here, there would be no need for a bearing or a bush there, as we've got a bronze bush at this end. And it's held at the other end, the engine end, so they wouldn't put a mid bearing, that's bad practice, you know. So somewhere here is bad, and I put a light down the end of this thing, so you're working down the end of a tunnel. And it appears to be corrosion and rust about here. This is the reason why it was all um, solid, or this part of it was solid. So what the hell do we do down here? Well, my initial thinking is to somehow run something down there to clean, clean that up. Perhaps a long, long drill. And in fact, I'm going to stop this camera right now and um, investi investigate that possibility.
okay well we got to this stage of cleaned the shaft I've cleaned the leg the shaft now runs in and out you know beautifully smoothly I made another countersunk to fit this so I'm going to reassemble just this leg when I took it apart this was full of grease now rightly or wrongly I'm not going to put grease in it I'm not happy with grease in this situation we've got We've got bronze bearings, we've got a bronze thrust bearing, we've got a bronze, bronze main bearing. And, I don't know, I'm just not happy about it. As I say, right or wrong, I'm not going to put grease in here. I've got some high point 90, I'll fill it up with that. I'm more happier about that. It will, um, it will track in and lubricate far more than grease will. I, my unhappiness about this grease, and it may be original, may not be, but uh, have you ever looked inside your angle grinders that use a, a crown wheel and a planetary wheel? You'll know in a very short time, through centrifugal force, the grease flies to the outside, and there might be masses of grease in there, but you're running pretty dry. I don't like that idea. The only way to overcome that is to pack it full with grease, and then you get pressure, so... I'm doing my own thing, it's my choice, it's my outboard, high point 90. Well I would do, where is it? Bonker. Right. How can I do this? Spill it all over the beach, I should. Jubbly, jubbly. Ooh. Let that just settle a minute. I'll put a wee drop on the shaft. Lovely, jubbly. Right, this goes down this end. And it should come out this end. Where are you? There it is. Don't go too far, you won't get me. Whoops, you have come too far. Push that back. Put him on. I knew I'd get in a mess, I knew I'd get in a mess. You put it on back to front, plonker. Right, get it out again. <coughs> Why do I do stupid things? Try it that way around. That's better. That's it. Now it might fit. This is not tight, it's just that we've got a piston action with the oil. It's going. Let me rag. Look, I know I get this all over. That just shows what a good fit that uh, that shaft is in that bronze bush. It's just a hydraulic action of me trying to force the oil out. It's going. There we go. That turns the shaft. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That's the original one. That's the one I've made up. My arm's in the way. You can't see what I'm doing. Wow. Good grief. I'm, I'm not actually cock-handed. It's trying not to uh, 
Having to work round a camera, tripod leads and everything else, you won't believe how awkward it is. Sorry about that long-winded bit, but uh, oh, that sounds nice. Well, that's the, the little engine itself. The actual shaft was all all like this. The chrome's all gone on the silencer. If you're under some sort of idea that the end of this video. It's going to be me proudly pulling this thing and it's bursting into life. You must be balmier than me. But uh, we'll carry on. I've got no idea whether anyone's bent the crank, whether we've got a spark or anything else. I'm merely going to clean this, put this back onto the leg. I'm working on the uh, premise that, well, it might be a static. If we can get a proper bang, I don't know. But uh, we're a long way down that road and this just isn't... This is not my prime objective is to have this this running. That would be nice, but um, too much of this is gone. You know, it costs far too much money to have all this re-chromed and so forth. It's just simply not worth it. It's, um, it's, it's just too far gone. And uh, that wasn't the purpose of getting this little, out, this little engine. So I'll just clean a little bit of it up so I'm not like this all the time. And just using some of my old grotty petrol here. We'll have a, a little clean up. When I get time, when I get time, I'm going to do a fucker cleaning tank. Automatic cleaning tank based on a, a washing machine with revolving arms and jets and so forth. That would be nice, wouldn't it? I've been tr going to make that for the last 30 years. <laughs> oh dear. Never mind. Right, at least that can go back on the on the leg now. That's the bit that I wouldn't be able to get at. A bit more of this. I'll try not to get it in the in the mag. Just in case we've got a, something that resembles a spark. Pretty unlikely, quite honestly. I'm not going to be too disappointed if I don't get this one to go. I'm, I'm, I mean this honestly. It's, uh, as I said, it's on the cards I wouldn't. But uh, we'll blindly carry on, seems I've got your encouragement. <laughs> Talk about the blind leading the blind. Right. I think we'll let that dry. Right, I'm going to go and have a wash up and let that dry. Okay? I've attached the engine to the shaft. And um, it does actually turn now, look. That's something it didn't do when I had it originally. So I've made some progress. Whether it's worth all the effort, I don't know. But um, with the aid of a pair of pliers and very, very carefully, I've straightened up most of these fins. Um, it's an ominous sign when, when you see them bent, you have to ask, how much force did they try and, uh, or did they apply to this to try and find out why it was 
it was seized. Um, it's never a good idea to blindly apply force, but to investigate what the problem is first, or separate it. Anyway, we have made, to this stage, we have made progress. Let's have a go at the bracket. Well, this is the bracket. I'll skip over this, because to be honest, this was a doddle. This is cleaned up, and um, everything moves as it should do. And uh, it's just a question of penetrating oil and uh, taking me time, so that's fine. This part, why I had to take it completely apart, the halves and the washers and so forth, is this part here clamps around this part here, around the leg. And halfway down there, well that's the remains of a, that's the remains of a, a, a leather sort of collar. Well that's had it, it's wool out of shape. Well I've got that as a size, and I've got some leather, I'll cut a fresh one to go around there, so it will all look the part, if nothing else. Well, now I've got the engine mounted vertically on a on its bracket, which is much easier to work on. It's the right height. And although it all turns freely now, there's a horrible noise at this it's scraping somewhere, so that could be grot. Anyway, we'll investigate it a little bit further, and there's three little bolts on the top. So I remove those and that top comes off. That's good. Then this little piece comes off. Well, that's good. Now I've got a slot that I can look inside and... Oh my dear. <laughs> it's awful. Anyway, this is going to have to come off. So how do we take this off? We've got nothing to put a puller or anything on. But uh, I've sussed this one out. If I go in a little bit you'll see that there's a thread on the inside here. So that would have a fitting, and I'll have to make one up, that screws in to that thread. And then you would have another threaded part in the middle with a bolt, and you simply just tighten the bolt up, and it'll draw the uh, flywheel off of the, off of the shaft. So that's good. Now, in there, there's a washer. How am I going to get that washer out? Well... Here's a little tip for you. You could, you could, turn the outboard upside down and shake it and so forth. Chances are you might lose it, and it's not an easy thing to do, but a, a quick and easy one is to take two screwdrivers. I bet this isn't going to work live. <laughs> Place one either side, take a magnet, and drop the magnet on the two screwdrivers. And theoretically, the the little washer should become the keep. And it is. Okay? Thought you'd like that one. Right. Well, if I can show you down there. Oh, I'm not too sure you want to look. But I will. Come on, focus up. No. Not going to, is it? What do you want for two quid? <laughs> no, it's no good. I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have that bit off anyway. So, it should be fun and games making up a, a fitting. It's quite a fine thread. I wonder what the chances are of finding something that will screw in there and adapting it. In case you under some illusion that I don't have my disasters, <laughs> you'd be wrong. I've broken a fin off, haven't I? Uh, it was one of the bent ones, but that's no excuse. You didn't do it. I broke it off. And I put a rag round here, and I've made up a, an extractor tool. And I was tightening this up, and just under the rag, this fin broke. So it doesn't take very much, does it? So this video is going to come more of a failure or a disaster. 
Well, it will bounce up the other ones. <laughs> I might as well show you me cock-ups as well. Anyway, don't make things worse. Stop, think. I can't repair that. I can't put that back on. It's not worth the effort to do it. Will it throw it out of balance? So, well, it's very light. Probably not. But what is I've taken the adjacent fin and I've taken that one out also. Okay? The loss of those two fins shouldn't make any difference. But uh, it's a very sad state of, uh, to come to and not something I'm proud of. But I'm certain we all do it, don't we? I won't tell you what I said when I felt that go. You can imagine. Uh, just in case, and I've had comments or people chat, you know, they seem to think I have a very charmed life playing and doing all the things I do in my workshop and facilities and fishing and so forth and so on. Well, yeah, that's what I, that's what I show you, of course, but, um, you know, I have a family, I do all the things that you do. You know, I have to go shopping, I have to cut the grass and... Uh, do cleaning and all that sort of thing. And Well, you, you wouldn't really like to uh, see a picture of me doing hoovering, would you? Would you? <laughs> that would be a rare thing. Who would take the video then? Right, well, I think we'll investigate further whether there's any possibility of a spark here. I will just clean the points with some crocus paper. And I'll put this this top just back on and we'll just give it a spin and just see if there is a spark or not. If there isn't, there's no choice. That's got to come off. And I'll have to sit down and make a better fitting. Uh, trouble is, is, as you're getting older, you know, the your dexterity, your eyesight, everything deteriorates. I find that really frustrating. Anyway, we'll carry on. You can tell from the tone in my voice, I'm really choked that I've broken that. Um, knowing, and I've, I've, I've said this time and time again, and I'm going to say it again, just knowing your limitations and just knowing when to quit, you know, knowing have you the facilities, have you the abilities, what are the risks involved. Every single, every single workshop, garage, repair facility should have a great big sign across the wall. Do no harm. And uh, so many stuff ends up in our, in Skip's landfill. Not just because they've failed through old age or worn out, but because of damage people do. They take on repairs that... Uh, they're perhaps not uh, suited to do, if you know what I'm trying to try to be diplomatic here. <laughs> so, POC is quit. Um, this is a big disaster, this, this video, but never mind. Uh, the, the noise around here is because it was rubbing, and I put a bit of crocus paper in there and just worked it in some WD and it's cleared it. And I've blown out the all the spun this and blown out with compressed air as best I can and using a little piece of crocus paper I've cleaned the points several times and I put the nut back on and we have got a spark which is quite amazing so I put that on there can you see that spark plug if I turn it around to there you might do if I turn that light out does that help? Maybe, maybe not. Look at the plug. Uh, if I drop me drill on there. Right, well we've got a spark. So, hand back, other way. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I've got so much else to, to look at the carbs, the tanks, the pipes, whether they can be freed up. I honestly, honestly do not know. I'm uh, 
I'm not leading up to a, a a big success story. I'm hoping, yes, I am hoping, but at this stage I'm talking live and it's, it's well, we shall have to see. I've progressed, but unfortunately I've left my mark on this repair. And, uh, well, we just have to live with that, won't we? Okay then, well I've just come back from indoors, so I've had a cup of tea and a, and a toasty. And my missus has gone to town and I've cleaned the kitchen floor, that'll, that'll please her, that'll be a, a brownie point at least, won't it? <laughs> ah dear, right, back to the flame, I suppose. This is the tank and the tin work, you can see it's in quite a bad state. A bit of rust in the bottom there, but uh, not as much as I, I thought there would be. The pull mechanism uh, makes a noise, but I think it only wants an oil. And the actual cord, well, that looks all right, so I don't think we need to replace that. So, and I don't think I'm going to re. And uh, if I if if I get it going, then I might rub this down and paint it, but. Uh, no, we, 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 we're just going too far with this. this. That wasn't the name of the game. So that should come out. Oh my God, you can't bend that. That'll have to be replaced. I wonder if this has got a gauze, and I dare say this would leak. It smells, by the way. Oh, that's a nice gauze. That's, that's nice and clean. That's all right. But we'll have to do something with that. Oh, that's, ooh. oh, it does work. These, is a similar one on uh, on seagulls, and they have a little cork, cork washer, cork, little cork that shuts the field off. And they leak like bilio, especially if they've dried out. And uh, there was one guy on, on YouTube, he put a, a row of uh, little O-rings, no need to have done that, totally pointless, so they'll get attacked more than the natural cork. And if you have got one that leaks, put them in the kettle for 10 minutes and boil them, and they'll swell up beautifully every time. So uh, I think that'll get that treatment. We'll clean the tank out, and we've been down this route, haven't we? This one doesn't look too bad, it's only rusty just here. So we'll clean that out, get rid of the grot. The carburetor, now that is solid, everything here is solid. Ah, oh dear, oh dear, nothing, no, nah, nothing's going to move on this. Uh, well, that, that moves, that's your choke. <laughs> ah, I remember these little things, lovely. Anyway, we'll take it apart as best we can and we'll give that a soak up. Somebody said, why didn't I use me uh, ultrasonic cleaning tank on the other? video on the other card. Well, seeing as we're talking about disasters, <laughs> I found out if I increased the heater voltage and the anode voltage a little bit, didn't half improve the performance, so I increased it a little bit more, and by Jove, that, that really increased the performance. And then I increased it a little bit more, and by heck, that near enough boiled the water, and then I, bang! Ha <laughs> ha Oh dear. And as the valves were 84 quid each, we uh, consigned that one to the, the scrap heap. Never thought I'd say that, but you just heard me say it, folks. Right, so soak this one. And while that's soaking, we'll just clean this up. We'll find some... All these bolts were missing. Whoever had it, these bolts, these nuts, they were all missing. So we'll just clean this a little bit. Soak that one. We'll soak that one overnight um, till I can organise something better. Oh, well, we've made some progress, haven't we? This is where I get so, so frustrated. 
your eyesight goes as you get older. I don't know if you can see this, but that's the main jet there. And that little piece of wire I poked through. I spent 10 minutes trying to poke that through. I held it up to the light and couldn't see any light through that jet. That's how small it is. And that's what I find so frustrating. I've got glasses on, but trying to hold a magnifying glass and do that as well. Oh well. It can only get worse, can't it guys? Don't let me lose that. I'll leave that wire through it. That's the best way. And put that in the in there to soak. I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking this is the point in the video where I'm going to give this a pull and it's going to run perfectly, right? Uh, I'm not putting money on it. Oh. You may not be surprised, but I damn well am. <laughs>